I'd like to thank AJR for the opportunity to present our work with you. On behalf of our team, I'm going to share how placement of a rectal tube can improve image quality and reduce artifacts in prostate MRI. I and my co-authors have no personal disclosures, with the exception of Dr. Spilseth as a paid consultant at Francis Medical. Multiparametric MRI of the prostate has become increasingly important in the diagnosis and treatment planning for prostate cancer through lesion detection, staging, and biopsy targeting, as evidenced by its inclusion in several prostate cancer guidelines worldwide. The fusion-weighted imaging, or DWI, leads to improved diagnostic performance and is an integral part of the MRI protocol recommended by the widely used Prostate Imaging Reporting and Data System, or PIRADS. However, DWI is prone to susceptibility-related artifacts that occur at the interface of structures with different magnetic susceptibilities, such as air and soft tissue. These artifacts cause magnetic field and homogeneities, resulting in image distortion and signal loss. Therefore, air in the rectum can significantly reduce DWI quality and may impair tumor detection, particularly in the peripheral zone of the prostate, as demonstrated here. Pyrads and others have discussed several strategies to reduce susceptibility-related artifacts, but there is currently no consensus regarding patient preparation. Strategies proposed to reduce artifacts include antispasmodic agents and enemas, though results have been inconsistent. Rectal tube placement has also been recommended to remove air from the rectum and allow air to escape freely during the examination, but its impact on image quality compared with no preparation remains poorly understood. Therefore, we aim to determine the impact of rectal tube placement on image quality and artifact reduction of prostate MRI. Our retrospective study was IRB-approved and HIPAA-compliant. 200 consecutive men underwent prostate MRI between October 2019 and January 2020. All MRIs were acquired on a single 3-tesla scanner with a pelvic face array coil using a PIRADS version 2.1 compliant protocol. The only exclusion criteria was prior hip replacement due to metal-induced artifacts. During the study period, all MRI acquisition parameters remained the same, with each patient receiving instructions to void and defecate immediately prior to imaging. In November 2019, these standard instructions were modified to include the placement of a lubricated 18 French dual lumen tube into the rectum by an MRI technologist. The tube was left open to the outside environment to allow gas to escape freely during the exam. A total of 196 patients were included in the analysis, where 97 patients had a rectal tube placed prior to imaging and 99 patients without. All images were reviewed by two board-certified radiologists, subspecialized in body imaging, blinded to the clinical information and MRI report. A five-point Liker scale was used for DWI distortion, overall quality of the ADC map, T2-weighted imaging motion artifacts, and the presence of rectal gas, with a score of 1 being optimal for no artifacts or excellent quality, and a score of 5 being the worst for severe artifacts or poor quality. The maximum anterior posterior rectal luminal diameter at the level of the prostate on sagittal T2 weighted imaging was measured as demonstrated here by the dotted line. If a rectal tube is present, the insertion depth from the anal verge to the tube tip was measured on sagittal T2 haste image as demonstrated here. Interobserver agreement was assessed using Cohen's kappa and Pearson's correlation coefficients. Image parameter scores were compared between groups using Wilcoxon rank sum test. Here is a 70-year-old man who underwent prostate MRI without the placement of a rectal tube and received a score of 5 for large rectal gas present on T2-weighted images, a score of 5 for severe DWI distortion, and a score of 5 for poor ADC map quality from both reviewers. In contrast, here is a 60-year-old man who underwent prostate MRI with the placement of a rectal tube and received a score of 1 for no rectal gas present on T2-weighted images, a score of 1 for no DWI distortion, and a score of 1 for excellent ADC map quality from both reviewers. Interobserver agreement was almost perfect for DWI distortion and presence of rectal gas. There was substantial agreement for ADC map quality moderate agreement for T2-weighted imaging motion artifacts, and high agreement for rectal diameter. Here are the image perimeter scores between the tube groups. By reviewer 1 in blue, and reviewer 2 in red, with the respective horizontal colored bar as the main for each reviewer, which were not significantly different. The black horizontal bar is the main for both reviewers. DWI distortion artifacts in the rectal tube group were significantly less than the no-tube group. The overall quality of the ADC maps in the rectal tube group was significantly improved than the no-tube group. 
Of note, none of the patients with rectal tube placement had a score of 5 for severe artifacts or poor quality compared to the 19 patients without rectal tube placement. TT-weighted image and motion artifacts in the rectal tube group was not statistically significantly less than the no-tube group. Presence of rectal gas in the rectal tube group was significantly less than in the no-tube group. The mean rectal diameter in the rectal tube group was significantly smaller than the no-tube group. In summary, the rectal tube group has significantly less DWI distortion artifacts, improved ADC map overall quality, less rectal gas with smaller rectal diameter than in the no-tube group. Note that the average of the rectal diameter was only decreased by approximately 4 mm with rectal tube placement due to the presence of rectal stool. This implies that the absence of air is more important than the absence of stool in decreasing artifacts and improving image quality. Our results show that the optimal rectal tube insertion depth should be at least 8 cm. When the rectal tube is inserted less than 8 cm, the rectal air posterior to the prostate is often not able to escape effectively, as the rectal tube side holes may be below the level of the prostate, as seen here on image A, with 2 cm tube insertion depth within the anal canal. The tube tip may also deform the prostate contours when inserted less than 8 cm as seen in image B with a 6 cm tube insertion depth that mildly distorts the prostate. Image C demonstrates this 10 cm tube insertion depth allowing the rectal gas posterior to the prostate to escape. In contrast, image D shows a 14 cm tube insertion depth with side holes above the level of the prostate, not allowing the rectal gas posterior to the prostate to escape effectively. In conclusion, rectal tube placement during prostate MRI significantly improved ADC map overall quality, reduced DWI distortion artifacts, and rectal gas with smaller rectal diameter. Severe artifacts were entirely eliminated in a rectal tube group. These results support the practice of rectal tube placement for routine patient preparation during prostate MRI to improve image quality. For further details of our study, please review our publication on AJR. I would like to acknowledge our team, Drs. John Azutemes, Robin Scott, and my mentor, Dr. Ben Spilseth, in the Department of Radiology at the University of Minnesota, Nathan Rubin at the Bow Statistics Corps for Statistical Analysis, and Dr. Greg Metzger at the Center for Magnetic Resonance Research for his expertise. Thank you so much for your time and attention.